Well, I hope you have enjoyed. More than that, I hope you have gotten something out of this series, Holy, Holy. And we're talking holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, H-O-L-Y, to be completely set apart for God. We just sang how the Lord is holy. And when we talk about the Lord being holy, do you know what that really means? It means he's perfect. He's perfect. Um, we never achieve that. But he said, be holy as I am holy. And so it's this process that he wants us to become more and more like him. And, uh, and we realize that that involves a number of things. Now, so I'm going to, about to read to you. He does that work, but how many of you know we have to cooperate? Yeah. Okay, good. Y'all are, y'all are up to speed. Let's go ahead and look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify or set apart, it has to do with holy, you completely, so that's where I really derive that holy, holy, sanctify you completely, and may your whole, help me out, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Amen. Amen. Take just a moment and tell you. And we're back. (laughs) All right. Verse 24 again. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He will do this. He will do this. And as I just said, but we have to cooperate. And the work that he will do, he will present a spirit, soul, body, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. We can't do that on 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 our own. We just cannot. This is the completed and complete work of God. It's the work of the cross. It's the cleansing blood. It's the promises and power of God. It's the Holy Spirit, our helper and our guide. It's him. He will do it. But we have to cooperate. We have to participate in this. Now, the goal, and let me just say this, please go back. Please go back and and uh, listen, watch these messages on this series. This is just vital. We're not just doing some little teaching for a few weeks and then go on to something else. We're adding to our life. We're adding to our understanding and, and what God wants to pr- produce in our life. And uh, they're not long. They're, they're 30 minutes or less. I had a gentleman on the way in this morning say, hey, it's the man of the hour. And I said, actually, half hour. Okay? And I'm not even that. But um, he will do this work, and we cooperate and participate with him. Now, remember that you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. And we are to steward spirit, soul, and body well, so that we are holy, completely, spirit, soul, body, healthy, whole, holy, set apart for God. Um, and as healthy, whole, and holy as we can be so that we're optimized. We're this optimized, integrated unit that works as one. How many of you know about some of the personality assessments that you can take, Enneagram and and some of those others? And um, uh, I used to study them more than I do now, but Alicia and I were just talking about this a couple weeks ago, and, and we said, well, this person is a three, but their wing is this, and when they're healthy, they're this, and when they're not, they're this, okay? How many of you know that you're kind of this, but when you're not healthy, you're not, okay? And so we've got to be this, healthy, whole, and holy in, in our spirit, our soul, and our body so that we can operate in this optimized, integrated unit. The model for us would be the, the Godhead. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 1 John uh, 5, 7 says, And these three bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And these three are one. And we know that. We understand that about the Trinity. Can't understand that fully. How are, how are three one and how is one three? But it's that operating all of those things together as one. And God created us as a trichotomy, as a triad. Um, so that we are spirit, soul, and body working together, not working against. 
And, and so that's the emphasis that we've had with each week um, on all of this. Because when one component is out of balance, how many of you know it's going to create drag on the others? You know? And so I've, I've prayed. Uh, I've been to my doctor. I'm trusting God. I'm doing everything I know to do this morning. But the drag that would be on me this morning is part of my physical body system is just not wanting to fully, fully cooperate. But I, I feel good. We're going to be great. I'm not breathing on you. I'm not contagious, the doctor said. My point is, is simply this. Um, when my body doesn't feel completely like it should, then we've got, we've got to get on that. You know, because otherwise, and you know this, if you're not feeling good, you don't feel like praying. You don't feel like going to work. You don't feel like being nice to people. You know? And... and all of those things can create a, a drag. You know, it's like a, a, a three-legged table or stool. And if we have one of these that's messed up or short or whatever else, it's going to affect the rest. If one of them's out of com commission, it's, go it's going to upset the whole thing. There's a holy balance, a divine design of your spirit, your soul, and your body. Now, First Thessalonians puts them in what I believe is the scriptural order. The emphasis first, spirit, then soul, and then body. And you can go back in the previous weeks and hear more and more on all of those things. So I want to share with you today something that you'd think, well, I don't, I don't know. Does this have anything to do with it? And it totally does. And you ready? I want to talk for a few moments about the brain. The brain. Did you bring yours? <laughs> all right. Now, if I have a title for today, it would be this, All Together Now. All Together Now. So I, um, you know, I, I shared a little bit about it last week. I was in bands all my life, you know, in uh, middle school, junior high, high school, college, and so forth. And there are times where you work in sections. And so, you know, the director may say, hey, let me have all the woodwinds, you know. All right, let me hear the brass on this. Um, percussion, you know, and then, all right, all together now. And so that's what we're after is the all together now, to get all of these worked out and all together. And the brain has a big part to play. Let me read to you a couple of things about the brain. It is the processing and command center of the body, weighing just three pounds, and controls everything from our beating hearts to the storage of memory. Contains 86 billion neurons, which are specialized cells that communicate with each other using chemical and electrical signals. The brain is a complex organ that controls thought, memory, emotion, touch, motor skills, vision, breathing, temperature, hunger, and every process that regulates our body. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. But hear this. But the brain is not just an organ. And it is not just a body part. Again, you truly are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is an intersection, an interaction, uh, an interwovenness of the spirit, the soul, and the brain the spirit and the soul use the brain. It's part of the physical, biological part that the spirit and the soul are expressing themselves through. Now, it is more complex than I can comprehend and certainly more complex than I can convey. And reading for months on this, uh, reading on this, even the PhDs on this do not understand how all of this could work the way that it works, and it's because it's the creation of God. Amen. And it can't be duplicated. So we must give special attention and care, are you ready for this, to our brains. And dare I say, we're hurting our own brains. And so we're messing with a, a dynamic, vital 
mechanism that is joining the practical and the spiritual. And uh, I want us to take a look at a few things with this this morning. You good? You still with me? So Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's just look at how some of the result of this. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, come on, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Not too much to ask of you. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your, of your mind, that or so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now look at me for a moment. If something's going to change in you, if something's going to change in how you live your life, how you think about things, what you believe, how you approach things, your thoughts have to change. Your mind has to be renewed. And it is an ongoing process for all of us. And never get out of that process. We have to renew our minds because if you don't, the inverse happens and your mind, will, you will be conformed to the world's way of thinking. So we have to renew our minds to, so that we can know what the will of God is for our life because that's where you want to live. Amen. You actually can change and rewire your brain. It's called, and it's big words here for us on the screen, neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. And that can happen where you are adding neurons or losing neurons by what's going on in your mind and in your brain. Neurons become stronger through repeated use. So the more you repeat an action, a thought, a word, those neurons that are working with it actually become stronger. They actually become weakened the less you use them, the less attention you give to them. Here's a phrase I've known, a principle I've known for decades, and here, here's where it fits here. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. Come on, say it with me. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. I want to try to illustrate a little bit. In, in one of the books I was researching in, it talked about if you had a snowy hill and you took your sled out there, you know, Florida people, we know all about this. <laughs> but most of you know about this. Um, and if you're going out, it's a snow day, you're out of school, you got your sled, and you're, sli you're sledding down on that snow. If you keep going in the same place, the same, same little track, you're going to create a, a groove. The more that you do that, the more that you do that. All the while, it's still snowing a little bit. So if I keep doing that, I'm going to keep that groove. If I go different ways all the time, then nothing really is lasting, okay? And so think of the brain and the activity that would be going on if I can get, create a groove here, a good groove of things. It, we have the ability to learn. We have the ability to relearn. We have the ability, look at me, to change. We have the ability to rewire, so to speak, our brains. Uh, some of the best examples of this would be learning a language, or learning to play an instrument, or um, our kids are going back to school, I guess tomorrow or this week. Um, so if you're learning a new language, at first, think about how the brain and the neurons are working here. At first, it's difficult. It's like, uh, you know, whatever language you're trying to learn, it's like, uh, okay, I don't get it. And then if you stay with it, uh, you're working on it, but it's awkward. You keep working on it, it gets a little better. You keep working on it, it gets easy. And then you're fluent in that language. Or you're good on that instrument. You know, I can remember when I first started on trumpet. You know, and then fast forward a, a, a number of years, if I still sounded that way, you should melt it down. And, and so the same with kids going back to school. Guess what? Our, our uh, granddaughter Grace, um, our granddaughter Grace went to uh, preschool the other day. It's her first day. 
So we were all excited about that. So I asked her in the afternoon. I said, did you make new friends? And she goes, yes. And I said, what are their names? She goes, I don't know. <laughs> but guess what? In time, she will. Because she'll walk back in there again and she'll see her friends and hear their names and, and start to know them in that way. So things may start out. Somebody help the baby. Some Things start out difficult. Then they might get a little awkward. They'll get better, and then finally they become easy or fluent, and that's the way the brain works. Now go with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9. It says, don't worry about anything. All right, hold up, y'all. How many of you know we can get a worry groove? Anybody want to be vulnerable this morning and admit you might have a couple of worry grooves? You're just really good at worrying. How did you get so good at worrying? Practice, practice, practice. You just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. You reinforce it with news, with words, with everything else. And the Bible says, cut it out. Or actually it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. How many of you have a prayer groove? Or, let me, uh, hold on. How many of you are going to get a better prayer groove going, all right? All right? So don't worry about this. What do I do with this? I pray about this. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then, come on, help me. Then what? Do you want God's peace? Or do you want ulcers and be irritable and all that stuff? Baby, you better decide what groove you want. And so it's a matter of do not worry. Don't cut that groove. Don't go down that snowy hill one more time. We've, we've got to go down a different way. We've got to pray. And the result, that's what we're after, is God's peace. Somebody say amen. amen. God's peace, which exceed, exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your and your mm, as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Get ready for this. Fix your thoughts. Come on, say it. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. These are good grooves, y'all. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me and everything you heard from me and saw me doing. And then the God of peace will be with you. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep him in in the Hebrew, it is, and this is a rare thing in, this, in the Scripture, it is shalom, shalom. It is emphasized for exponential result here. You will keep him, her, in perfect peace, help me with this, who's because he trusts in you. So it all comes down to this. Do you trust him? If you trust him, then you'll keep your mind, what? Stayed. You'll keep your mind stayed on him because you trust in him. 2 Corinthians 10 says that you can and you must take thoughts captive. Now, how many of you know what an earworm is? Just put that word up. How many of you know what an earworm is? You don't have to go to the doctor for it. It's a song that gets stuck in your mind. You ever had that? Yes. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> uh, right now we got some of our family living at, at the house for a little bit, and I got grandbabies there, and so the TV would be like, bingo. <laughs> and I love it. But I don't need that all day. <laughs> and poor grandma on the reindeer. But if we're not careful, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. What do you do? Look at me. You don't resist it. You replace it. You don't resist it. Oh, because uh, uh, it, da, 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 it, 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 it'll be all right. You, 
Worthy is your name, Jesus. You've got to replace it. So what about thoughts? What about wrong thoughts? What about fearful thoughts? What about all those things? What do I do? Because you have a tendency to ruminate. And some of y'all have some good grooves that you've cut that you go to bed with. And they keep you awake. Nobody's looking at me right now. <laughs> and they keep you awake and go over and over and over and over. What are you going to do? You can't resist it. You have to replace it. And the best way to do it is replace it with God's word and with truth. You have to speak it. Because let me go back to your brain. The speech centers dominate the brain. The speech, when you kick in the speech centers, it takes everything to a whole different level. You have to watch your words. Let me put this up on the screen for you. Use life-giving words and send the brain into life-giving actions. Read that with me. Use life-giving words and send the brain into life-giving actions actions because as I've told you before that your brain believes everything that you say to you and about you and so what are you saying and your words and your and your brain and speech centers dominating your brain and so you've got to say some things like this today's going to be a great day come on I want you to say it with me today is going to be a great day well, I don't know. It's just this and that. And I saw this on the news. And, <laughs> and if you were my friend, I'd say, I'll see you in about three weeks. Because <laughs> you don't need to hang out with that. And yet you do that to yourself and talk otherwise. Come on, one more time. Today's going to be a great day. And you know what your brain does? Your brain says, all right, let's make that happen. How about this? It's going to be okay. Come on, say it. How about this? Uh, I got a new thing coming. Worship team saying that this morning. How about this? I will not fear. God, I trust you. I cast my cares. I'm happy today. God's got me today. We, we've got to cut some new grooves. Well, we'll just have to see how it turns out. Mm. A thought spoken, a thought spoken gets recategorized and reprioritized. Your brain starts trying to make it happen. It goes from a concept spoken to a project. I shared with you a few weeks ago, your brain starts drawing up plans and pulling permits. You had a concept. Once you speak it, the brain said, well, let's make it happen. It goes from a possibility, possibility to an expectation. So the scripture understands more than we understand how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, and that's an inclusive word there, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord God, my strength and my redeemer. So we've got to get our words and our thoughts. Come on, say it, words and thoughts. You're going to have to cut new grooves, y'all, and you can. And the more you do, the stronger they get, and the wrong ones, the weaker they get, and they're going to get covered over by dust, sand, snow, mud, whatever. I don't even care because we need some new grooves. Can I get an amen from somebody today? Now, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have a brain that cannot be duplicated by AI and all this junk. We're not even using full capacity, and that's not even the point. The point is we have to take better care of our brain because our spirit, our soul, our body are utilizing that brain so that we can, be, we can express ourselves and live out in this world the way God has intended for us to live. Amen. Amen. So let me... Let me, I'm going to give you a list here, and it is spiritual and practical. And so I'm bringing this series into a, for landing right now. 
It's spiritual and it's practical. There's going to be some both ends. It's going to deal with your spirit, your soul, your body. It's going to deal with the four circles of biological, psychological, social, and spiritual. All of that, the whole of you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And you better cooperate better with God so that we're not tipped over, so that we're not creating drag, so that we're not missing out on the peace, the joy, the goodness, the blessings, the power of God. God wants to do so much more in your life. He wants to do so much more through your life. I'm telling you the truth. So I'm going to give you a list that's going to happen really fast. But one of the things I want you to do first is ask this question, and then I'll get off the brain uh, exclusively on this. But will this help or hurt my brain? All day long, I don't care if it's something you're watching, something you're listening to, an emotion that you're holding on to, something that you're eating or drinking or who you're hanging out with or an activity or you're participating in it. Will this help or will this hurt my brain? Because it matters. It matters. Come on, everybody say it matters. All right, get ready. Here's a list. This is a list all together now. This is spirit. This is soul. This is body. This is everything. These are some things to do. Maybe we can post this this week, this big, this big old list here. All right. First of all, first and final 15. Say it. First and final 15. When you wake up, first 15 minutes. Before you go to bed, last 15 minutes. Uh, it affects your prefrontal cortex, reducing your blood pressure, anxiety, and boost your mood. What do I do with that first 15? What do I do with that final 15? Get in God's Word, pray. Did you know they have AM and PM devotionals? There's a great classic one by Charles Spurgeon. Joyce Myers has them. Billy Graham has them. Uh, go, you know where to get them. Delivered Prime tomorrow, okay? You can, you can get them and so that you've got a little guide, you've got a little help. First and final 15, it's going to change your life. You're going to start some new grooves. You're going to get some things going. All right, let's get going here. You need to, here goes the list. You need to worship. You need to pray. You need to get forgiven by the blood. You might need to repent. Uh, you need to give. You need to forgive. You need to sacrifice in some way. And by sacrifice, I mean this. It'd be better for me if I didn't do it. It'd be better for them if I did do it. Go ahead and do that. Serve. You need to serve. You need to move. You need to exert yourself. We talked about these. You need to feed and fuel yourself. You need more water. You need to limit your salt. You need to cut out alcohol. <laughs> Got quiet there. Hey, and this is not even a moral or financial or any other thing. For the sake of your brain and your life, cut out sugar, less caffeine, sleep and rest, pray in the Holy Spirit, cast your cares, avoid loneliness, get in a group, get in a dream team. I, now watch this, it's a both end. Avoid loneliness. Here's the other part. Get alone. Both hands. Take naps. Walk fast. Walk slow. Don't feed fear. Cut out some of the stuff you're watching and listening to. Get outside. Breathe deep. Look up. Look down. Look close. Cast your cares. Smile. Wave. Greet total strangers. Give thanks. Budget. Reduce clutter. Take multivitamins. All of this is research, y'all. Sweat. Chill. It is so good for you to wind down your shower going to cold water. Stick your forehead right up there until it takes your breath away. It is good for you. We're so creatures of comfort. Anyway, keep going. Less news. That yeah, wasn't enough. Less news. Less screens. Less social media. Ping pong. Pickleball. We. Pickleball, we, and ping pong are actually called aerobic chess. It's good for you. Speaking of that, play chess. Be a lifelong learner. Learn something new. Take a class. Work on coordination. 
stretch, sing, sing loud, be hard on yourself, give yourself a break, church days, switch up routines, switch up routes, go a different way, change hands on how you normally do things, make your brain uncomfortable and it grows. Ask God to heal your brain. Ask God to heal your body. Let anger go. Love mercy. Do justly. Walk humbly. Ask God to restore your soul. Work on your relationships. Ask the Holy Spirit by the blood of Jesus to cleanse your conscience. And ask God every day to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And on and on the list would go, get it all together now, spirit, soul, body, spiritual, practical. We can do a better job of cooperating and caring. Start living the way that God divinely designed you for your brain. Cut some new grooves, make some new habits, get more of God's presence in your life. And when you get that holy balance going on, spirit, soul, body, I'm telling you what, you're going to start to really live the life that you didn't think that you could really live. And God has for you. Amen. Let's do it. And I'm going to go back to the offering verse. If you wait for all conditions to be favorable, you'll never do any of it. You just got to start. Just start. We'll, we'll put that list out. I'm, I'll get it to my team and we'll, we'll get that out. But I'm telling you what, it just makes sense. It's spiritual. It's practical. It's both ends. Just go do it. Just go do it. Just go do it. And invite God to be in the middle of it. And the Holy Spirit, he's going to do the great work. It's you, it's you stepping up, speeding up, and cooperating with him. It's going to change everything. Amen. 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 Did y'all get anything at all out of this today? I pray so.